I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about when you come on too strong. So this is a really important topic for most of you guys out there, and ladies too, when you're coming on too strong when you're first dating somebody. Actually, you can really come on too strong at any point in a relationship, but you have to be extra cautious in the early stages of dating. So. I was away this week, I did just get back today, and that is why I am running a little behind with everything, but as you guys know, I'm working hard to catch up with everything. So, uh, I'm not sure if I'll get five videos out this week, this will be, this is the fourth one, we'll see how it goes tomorrow with my catch up, uh, but I'm doing my very best to get you guys in as soon as possible. Because I know a lot of you guys have been freaking out. A lot of you guys have got some crisis going on. Some, some of you had reach outs from your exes. Some of you guys went on dates with your exes. So there's a lot to cover and I know it. And I assure you, I'm here and I am ready to help you guys out as best that I can. And uh, I was trying to think of a way that... Uh, I could share about coming on too strong because I had some recent emails and conversations where it came up. So I think it's important for you guys to know that there really is a delicate balance on opening up and sharing too much too soon. Especially, you have to consider if somebody doesn't know you that well, you can really freak them out, okay? So I got an email here today from a woman who's 29 years old and she said, Hi Craig, a huge fan of your channel. I have been watching you for about two months. I feel like I am kind of a dating disaster. I get asked out a lot, but I rarely get more than a second or third date. Okay, so you're starting to see that there's a pattern going on. That's good. You got to be conscious and aware of something in order to fix it. I was recently disappointed by a guy I had gone out with on two dates. He stopped text messaging me after our second date. I got up and said, I got upset and said, why did you just disappear on me? He didn't reply. I texted him, look, I get that you aren't interested. Can you please tell me if I did something? He replied, you're a little much. Mm, okay, so that's some good feedback. Good for you. You realized he wasn't interested and you just put an honest, uh, some honest feelers out there for him. Hey, can you tell me? Can you help me out? And he was nice enough to do it. Some people would have acted selfishly or, you know, just wouldn't have cared enough to do that. But at least he had a little bit of integrity to put it in a way that it was honest and yet not not very mean. You know, I'm sure he could have said uh, something more uh, harsh than that if he felt it. He just said, you're a little much. I spent two days thinking about what that meant. I brought it up to my girlfriends. None of them acted as if he knew what I meant. Well, okay, yeah, so your girlfriends might not pick that up on you, because we tend to act very differently in the presence of our friends and in the presence of our romantic uh, interest. And the other thing is, is that, let's face it, we are more accepting, I think, of our friends than our potential romantic partners. And because, you know, we've had a long history of them, and there's no real pressure of uh, the romance and the love that's at stake. It's, you know, kind of just an unconditional friendship that, you know, 
it's different than the romantic context, especially in the beginning. You know, if you get to know somebody, then hopefully, ideally, a friendship blossoms and romance blossoms too. Um, you know, a lot of you guys worry about being in the friend zone and just, yeah, I, I get that, I understand. But there should be an element of friendship that goes along with the romance. Of course, if somebody breaks up with you and they said they no longer want the romantic part of it and you're not okay with that, then you've got to say, look, I need the romantic part of that and I'm not going to settle for less if that's what you want. But you're going to have a friendship develop in a healthy romantic relationship, right? It's not going to be just romance all the time. Um, so, she said, it sent a spark in me. I don't know exactly what it was, but watching your videos helped me figure out I might be coming on too strong. I thought about it and decided to text some of the guys I had gone out with over the last six months. I texted five of them with not much hope that I'd hear back. I very politely said that I was trying to work on myself and asked if they could give honest feedback. Okay, well, you know, I applaud you for being brave enough to ask that question, especially with five people that it hadn't worked out with. I think it's good. I think it's uh, healthy. And you didn't, uh, you didn't really expect much out of it, so that's good because... You know, let's face it, a lot of times we go out on a date or two with somebody and they don't want to say anything harsh or uh, mean if they just didn't feel chemistry with you. She said, I said I would not be angry at them, but I wanted to know if I had done anything on our dates that they didn't like. One guy said, you kind of freaked me out when you kept talking about marriage and your family history of divorce on our first date. Yeah, that would do it. And you're on a first date trying to laugh and have a good time and you're going on and on about marriage and your family history of divorce. You're like, you know, my grandpa, he got divorced three times and my grandma, well, she murdered two of her husbands. I don't know if that counts as divorce or what, but they're no longer together. So if you do that on a date, people are going to be freaked out. Uh, actually, this is really funny. I, I, was, I did a Skype with a guy last week, and uh, we were laughing about, I think it was his first date or a second date with a woman, and they had gone out shopping together, and they were, they were just doing some window shopping, and uh, at one point, they go into this one store, and the woman decides to try on a wedding dress. <laughs> like, that is coming on at just a teensy bit, teensy, teensy bit too strong, you know? I can just imagine the guy is on this date and he's like, here comes the bride. What was her name? <laughs> yeah. And you know, the sad thing is, she probably had no idea that she had completely freaked this guy out. I mean, I don't know if I've ever told you this little nugget of gold, but I was on a date, let me see, it was a second date with a girl, and she told me she loved me four times on our second date. Yeah. There wasn't a third date, okay? Let's just say there was not a third date after that, okay? That was pretty freaky. Okay, I will admit, there had been a little bit of drinking involved. We were having a good time. But the first time when she said it, I it was because I was being really silly with her and laughing, and I th was hoping she meant it in the, oh my God, I love you, you're so funny way. And even though I, the minute it came out of her mouth, I knew it wasn't. And then she was like apologizing. And the way the apology was, was like, uh, I meant that. I want to see how you're going to react to this. 
And I played it calm. I was relaxed. You know me, guys. I was on. I was not stressed out about that. I was just thinking, danger, danger, danger. Right? <laughs> no, I knew. I knew I was in trouble um, when I heard that, and especially the way that she said it. She was really wanting to see where I was going to go with this. And, uh, you know, we hung out more and more. And this, as the night came on, she just, she said it like, she, she said it again. And then she said it two more times. And I was just like, okay, this is, this is, uh, too much, too much. Uh-uh, 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 no, no. <laughs> nice girl, very pretty girl. And, uh, I think she wound up, uh, moving in with somebody else a couple months later after that date. So I kind of felt like I had hmm, dodged the bullet. You know what I'm saying? I was doing my little Neo dodging the bullets there in the Matrix. Kind of scary. Somebody says they love you four times on the second date. That's not normal. That's not healthy and that's not love. That's attachment trauma. Right? Somebody that hasn't got their needs met is desperate to get their needs met. Oh, and this is totally sidetracked, but while I was on the Disney cruise, one of the uh, shows that we watched was the, uh, the Frozen show, and it reminded me of Anna from the movie, Princess Anna, and I would say that Anna has a very attachment style, and if you remember in the movie, if you've never seen Frozen, she gets engaged to a guy that she just met that day, right? And as you find out in the movie, the guy was just using her as an object, like I talk about all the time. Um, but he was using her because she was the queen and he wanted money and whatever, and he well, turns out to be the villain or whatever. But he preyed upon her attachment trauma that she was so desperate for love she had a very anxious attachment style, and if you want to take a look at it, really, if you look at Elsa, she had an avoidant attachment style. Now, obviously, she had her own issues going on there, but she was avoiding everybody, avoiding everything, and so the you can see this the dynamics play out in the romantic relationships that we see is that she was anxious, always trying to get her attention and she was avoidant, and then when she would try and get close, she would do more things to push her away. So, very interesting dynamic to play out in a cartoon like that, but I thought I would share that with you. Um, I was thinking, could I make that a whole video topic? And I was like, wow, well, I, I thought it might be a little too much. So there you have it, my insights into Frozen and uh, Anna, of anxious attachment style. Go watch the movie again thinking about that, and you'll be like, Oh, yeah, she really is anxious. Okay, so I got a little off topic, but let's just blame the sun. I had a lot of sun this week, and uh, that's that's the reason for it. Maybe I'm dehydrated, and it's late, so it's almost 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm trying to get this out for you guys, but last time I did a video at 2 o'clock in the morning, you guys, you guys appeared to like it, and you guys, I liked how... Uh, you just completely were rambling on and on like a crazy maniac. Ah, oh, that's a compliment. I guess I'll continue to do this. All right, so let me get back on track here. So, she said, uh, it was a real eye-opener for me. A second guy said that when I started crying on our first date, he didn't think I was emotionally ready but didn't want to hurt me, my feelings. I honestly had forgotten I had even done that. I guess that would be a little much for anyone on a first date. Yes, I would say that is definitely a lot to take on somebody crying on a first date. Um, so, sometimes we can come on too strong by oversharing. It's the point uh, I'm trying to help you guys understand. And here's the thing. It can be very difficult to know the right amount of self-disclosure. And I do suggest that you need to consider how long have you known this person before you disclose something. And you want to think about it like you have money in the bank. How much money do you have in the bank? Well, you need to have money in the bank before you can make withdrawals. And when you're taking on 
a really sensitive topic. You don't have quite a lot of money in the bank with that person, and so it's very easy to overdraw, and they just ee, get turned off and lose interest in you. And so you want to get to know the person. You want them to get to like you and invest in you, and you have the investments in them. So if you say something that comes on as a little too much or too strong, uh, you're not going to be in the negatives with that person and they're going to be like, mmm, like being told that someone loves you four times on a second date. I mean, had she said it on the third date like a normal person, there wouldn't have been a problem. You guys know I'm kidding, right? You always wait for the fourth date. Some of you guys are going to take that serious. Okay, let me clarify. Only kidding. Don't do that. You don't do that. So, as you can see, when one person has their unmet needs, they often act needy in a way that can disrupt the natural flow during a date or an early courtship, right? Because a lot of it is that chemistry, that click. And, you know, a lot of times people do things to try and control it, right? Here's another example. I don't think I've ever shared this one. This is from, from uh, several years ago. That I went out with this girl, very pretty girl, um, and very smart. She had a lot going for her. And we actually had really good chemistry. And we were having fun, having a good time. And it was obviously building. The tension was building. The chemistry was building. You know what I mean? We were flirting. And at one point we had left the restaurant we were in. We were outside walking by this lake and having a good time and arm in arm or whatever. And, you know, she was literally like nose to nose with me, flirting with me, like literally looking me in the eyes. And just like her lips were practically touching mine. And she was like, I don't kiss on the first date. And it was... It, not, it wasn't just that, but it was obvious that, you know, there was chemistry and she liked me. She wanted to kiss me, but there was more to it. I picked up a couple of other things during the talking and hanging out that something was going on that she was maybe not trusting to go with the flow of things, that she had a set structure in place of, I don't kiss on the first date. I don't do that. I don't do this. And it was very annoying to me. And I didn't like it because I knew we had a good chemistry. I knew that things were flowing well and that the evening would have ended really good had we, you know, just kissed and, you know, had that little bit of passion between us. And she didn't, and she just couldn't do it. And I think it was because so many people had kind of burned her in the past where it, 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 was, it was pretty obvious to me that it was like she'd gone out with other guys, they kissed her on the date, and maybe they lost interest with her. And you know how it is. I mean, sometimes guys just go out on a date with somebody and then they don't really like the girl or whatever. But I genuinely did like this girl. And it's like she's trying to put this structure in place. Why? If you look at it, it's like because she was afraid that if she appeared too easy maybe or she didn't follow this structure that it would keep me from getting interest with her. Uh, in other words, that if we kissed I would lose interest in her. And what do I tell you guys all the time? The very thing we're afraid of is often the very thing that we cause to happen. So she was afraid that I would lose interest in her if we kissed. Well, we didn't kiss because she was trying to control things too much. And I knew she really liked me. It was obvious she liked me a lot. But it, it wasn't that she didn't want to kiss me because she didn't like me. It was she wanted to kiss me, but she wanted to be me to ask her on a second date. So she was trying to control it in a way that she should have just been 
more natural and just kissed me goodnight and I would have been happy to take her on the second date but I got so frustrated by it and then she said a few things after the date when we were texting that I was just like mm, this you know what it's not worth it she's not gonna be flowing with the romance and and just going with the flow and I, it, there are some people that are like this where they want to follow a structure but it can kill the chemistry and, um, y you know, even the oversharing on that situation can kind of show you how it kind of killed the moment. By like, I don't kiss on the first date. This is my rule. She was very rigid in it. Had she just said, maybe if she put her fingers on my lips and said, not tonight. In a playful, flirty way, that would have maybe led to oh my gosh, like really like building the attraction. But the way she did it and the way she talked about it was just very rigid, set in stone. This is the way it has to go. Blah, 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 blah. And it was just like, mm -mm, not for me. I'm sorry. I'm too busy. I have too much going on in my life. If a girl doesn't want to show me that she's interested, I'll find someone else that is. And, you know, some people might not like that. Some of you ladies may disagree with the way I handle that. Bottom line is, I was the one that had to date her. And I could see that it was a lot of rigidity and rules that I was going to have to follow. And I just didn't think... It wasn't fun. It really wasn't fun. It totally killed the chemistry in the moment for me. So, oversharing can mess up the natural flow and connection that you feel with somebody and you want to keep in mind guys you want mutual self-disclosure when you're dating somebody new if it's too imbalanced and one person is disclosing so too much and the other is not it can throw off the the chemistry it can make somebody scared really it can and I see this all the time for example, somebody might say to me, what is your favorite movie? And I would say, oh, it's, I love The Empire Strikes Back. That's my favorite movie. And then they say to me, well, I want to have three kids. Well, that's a little bit of an imbalance. And that's going to scare anyway, anyone. If you've had a lot of neglect and you've had abandonment, and in your early childhood, you didn't get a lot of unconditional love. You're going to be more likely to lack the skill to identify if you are oversharing. And remember, if you have anxiety, it's going to cause you to lose empathy. And it's going to uh, ha create some difficulty for you being objective and seeing if you are coming across as oversharing to somebody else and you're coming across to that other person because you're caught up in your own needs being met. So, if you want to get my help personally, go to my website, AskCraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. If you like this video, put a like on there. I do appreciate it. And be sure to subscribe to the channel because I do post videos Monday through Friday. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth and I will talk with you soon.